Coming up today on Bridges, you will meet an author who says that the end of you is just the beginning. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm so glad that you could join us today. Today, we're going to take a look into a book that says that we can live a life of more of others and less of you. And Brent, it is so good to have you on the program today. So good today. to be here. Thanks for having me. So tell me, Brent, about this. The book is Living for Another. What made you write the book? You know, the book actually, um, it's, a, the, it's a funny story because the book actually sparked in my head after a guy sitting in my office for about 30 minutes telling me all that was wrong with his life. Just this is going wrong with my life and I'm unfulfilled here and this is going wrong and I can't, and this happened when I was a child and, mm -hmm. and I know how to do it. I sat there and nodded and all the things you're supposed to do. <laughs> and finally I looked at him and said, man, your life stinks. Yeah. And he went, excuse me? <laughs> and I said, man, if I had to think about you all day long, I'd be depressed too. Mm -hmm. And he went, Brent, you're not good at this. <laughs> and I, I said, but you know what, dude? You don't know my life. And if I had to think about me all day long, I'd be depressed too. Well, we all would. So I don't. Yeah. I, I try to think about others. That's what perked this. Mm -hmm. I think I've been in ministry for many, many years. And the first part of my ministry, the first, I believe, half of my ministry was teaching people about their identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. The second half of my ministry, I believe, is been about now that you know yourself, get over yourself Amen. and pour your life out. Exactly. And that's where the fulfillment yeah, will come from. Because I think what I hear you saying is that if really if any one of us thought about ourselves all day long, it would be a very sad story. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And a sad and, life to live. And the, the entire crux of this book is that your fulfillment will be will come as you give your life away. As you give it away. We're to live life like funnels, not puddles. Amen. The <laughs> title of the book is Living for Another and Brent Gambrell. I've been practicing saying your last name because I've messed it up so many times. Gambrell, Gambrell. is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Living for another. Mm -hmm. And so I completely agree with if I think about myself all day long, I'm going to be depressed. And, you know, the Bible says if I want to gain my life, I need to lose it. But that's voluntary loss. But it's not going to happen easily in your life. No. Oh, no. I don't give up my life easily. Oh, no. I'm telling you, I've been fighting tooth and nail. I know that's what the Bible and says. That's why, <laughs> that's why I kind of created the book is, is a rubber meets the road look at how do you live life for another? How do you pour your life out? I tell people all the time that, 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 that the things of God we're given are to be hung on to yeah. very, very loosely. And we're to allow everything that God gives us. Amen. There's chapters in the book on, called Not to Us. The church is not to us. The gifts of the Spirit are not to us. The fruit of the Spirit are not for us. Everything that God gives us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, are any of those things for you or are they to pour through you to others? They, they are for others. And yet I still ask Brent that question, how do I live my life for another? It starts in Philippians, consider others better than yourselves. Mm -hmm. A wonderful pastor friend of mine once said, um, he said that, 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 Everyone, when we walk into a room, when we walk into a room, we have prejudices. We rate everyone in the room. Absolutely. You do. We all do it subliminally. You're mm -hmm. lying to yourself if you say you don't. You're lying. <laughs> we walk into a room and we rate everyone. We do. The way to free yourself from that is just, no matter how you rank everyone in the room, most important, least important, prettiest, richest, whatever, rank yourself at the bottom. And then you serve everyone in the room. Yeah. Okay. So, That's where it starts. But I do, I have to ask you this because I, I hear somebody in the audience and myself as I read through the materials, like one of the thoughts that came to me is, okay, well, if I consider everybody better than me, does that make me a doormat? Does that, no, it makes you a welcome mat. A welcome mat. <laughs> it I want to be a welcome mat. I'm liking that. Yeah, I'm liking that. It makes you a welcome mat. It makes you, I, I, the way I look at, the, the way this book is set up, the first part of the book talks about the fact that we all look for fulfillment. Absolutely. Adam and Eve, the reason they sinned was they were looking for fulfillment their way. When yeah. Christ came, Christ said, my food is to do the will of the Father and finish the work. When they, when they ask him, Jesus, you need something to eat. The 12 goobers that walked around with Jesus were <laughs> asking him that. Uh, you know, you need something to eat. He said, my food is to do the will of the Father and finish the work. Mm -hmm. Well, you're grafted in the vine of Christ yes. and the vine's life now flows through you. I grew up in Florida. 
And in Florida, we have orange trees. Yeah. Well, if you eat an, a Valencia or, or a navel orange, you're, you're not eating one orange, you're eating two. You're eating an orange that has been grafted into the vine of another. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the sour stock root is a very strong root, but all the oranges that grow in Florida are very weak. So they've grafted them into this sour stock root that would produce bitter fruit. Mm -hmm. Now the truth, the, what's true about the vine becomes true about the branches, right? Amen. Well, that's how we get the vine. The vine growers learned that just eons ago. Jesus was saying, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Yes. Well, if you're, if you're grafted in the vine of Christ and the vine life, vine's life flows through you, what's true about the vine is true about you. What do you think the only thing is that will ever fulfill you? Do the will of the Father, finish the work. Amen. That's what fulfilled him. So what is the will of the Father and what, how do we finish the work? The will of the Father is the redemption of man is what I found and that's what we study in the book. To redeem means what? To make the most of. I always tell people, if you've got a coupon and it says 25% <laughs> off at Chick-fil-A because that's mm -hmm. Christian chicken, right? Absolutely. So if, you, if you've got, if you've got a, a, a coupon mm -hmm. and it says 25% off, you're not going to say, give me 10% off. Absolutely you're not. You're going to wait till double coupon days. I right? am. I'm so, going to so, look <laughs> at the receipt too and I'm going to make sure that that's been subtracted because I'm not good at math, so I can't figure it out, but I look you at the receipt. You want to redeem it as much for as much as possible. I do. The redemption of man doesn't just mean salvation. He wants to make the most of men. And as, as Christ's hands and feet on the planet now, we're to be redeemers. We're to help redeem the people around us. Amen. To make You're to be the biggest fan of every person around you. I like that. And so that in, in turn fulfills us, the redemption of man, and the work that needs to be finished is the glorification of God, to glorify the Father. We glorify the Father by serving mankind the way Christ did, by pouring our lives into everyone around us. And so the beginning of the book actually talks about this philosophy of mm -hmm. not to us, of living this. But people, when I would begin to teach this, would say, well, Brent, what does that mean with day to day? Because that's what everybody wants to know is practically speaking, how does all that really great concept, mm -hmm. how does that work? Because we don't know, like, I might not and agree when you teach that, Brent, but that doesn't mean that I know how to how do that. How do I love that. my mother-in-law? Yeah. Yeah, how do, I, how do I love that person at work that's difficult? Yeah. How do I serve that person? How do I, so the center of the book, we, we decided to walk through the another's in the Bible. We found, you, I cannot believe, it is a huge concept in the Bible that I've not seen taught. Yeah. Like, love one another, submit to one another, forgive one another. Mm -hmm. All the another's that we see bear with one another. So we walk through the another's. We call them another chapter or two. Another chapter. Because, you know, Brent, I will say, when I looked at the title, Living for Another, when I started going through this, I thought, that's right. There is so much talk about another, another in the Bible. So the name of the book, again, is Living for Another, author Brent Gambrell. So you talk about the philosophy mm -hmm. of living for another, but you also tell us in the book how to do it. How do you do it? That's where most of us get really mixed up and messed what up. What about the biggest one? We'll talk about this maybe in the next segment, but how do you forgive one another? How do you forgive that other person? Oh, I think we should do that definitely in the next segment because yeah. we probably need a whole lot of time because, you know, forgiving one another. Mm. That's a huge one. That's, that's, but really, that's what the really center of the book is. discusses is, okay. is how do I, here's situation after situation after situation, and here's how you, how do you bear one another's burdens when sometimes that person should bear their own burden? Because, see, that's the question, like, okay, bear one another's burdens I know that it doesn't mean to enable somebody. Exactly. But yet, that's the doormat. I've, welcome. I've done that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I've done that I've with enabled. the right heart because I care. I'm a compassionate person, mm -hmm. and then I get over into what would be considered enabling mm -hmm. and actually really messing somebody up more than helping so, them. So how do I yep. tell me? Well, you uh, in the book, we study the two words for bear and the two words for burden that the scripture uses. Okay. I'm a wordsmith and I love words. I'm not good at them, but I'm, I <laughs> love, love words. Okay. So I, I love the meanings of words and I love the, the English language is so wimpy, but the Hebrew and Greek was so wonderful. They are. So uh, we look at the, the bearing, bearing with and the burdens. There were two words for the word burden. In one sentence, it says, bear with one another's burdens, but everyone should bear their own burden. And it, it's a confusing scripture. It is. So 
there were two words, burden. First word burden is the burden that, that is too much for you to bear by yourself. Okay. There was a sweet woman in my church that could not pay all her bills. She had a chronic back condition and two teenage boys. Okay. She was single. So we split her bills between all the singles in our group, and each person took a bill for one year to take the pressure off while she could pay off chunk by chunk her bills. We spread that burden. We bared the burden with her. But and it, it was too much of a burden because right. I just want to make this really clear. To that was people. way too much. It was, it was she overwhelming. She couldn't do it. No. She had this back condition, right? So if you have a physical problem, you're not able to hold a job like other exactly. people. Exactly. Was, it was overwhelming for her. And okay. as Christian brothers and sisters, we were to bear the burden okay. with her. So a, a, a burden like that would be something that's outside of the realm of doable. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Something w that would crush someone. But the other word bear there, we're to, we're to bear our own burdens if those burdens are given to us by Christ. You know, the scripture says, uh, we, it says you will never be tempted more than you can bear, right? Right. We have twisted that. Many people say, well, God would never give you more than you can bear. Exactly. That's not true. <laughs> no, it's not true. You've twisted the scripture. No, it's not true. There are times where he gives us a burden to teach us a lesson. The word burden there was the backpack on a soldier, mm -hmm. this, this burden that would strengthen them while they carried it. And only this Holy Spirit is going to help you discern if that's a burden I should take off of mm -hmm. someone or that's a burden I will bear with you and walk with you while you bear that burden alone. Yeah. Does that make sense? Makes total sense yeah. and brings clarity into that bearing one another's burdens. Because, you know, again... Here you're welcome, Matt. Here you're a doormat. Yeah, and yeah. the <laughs> thing is, I want to be a welcome mat, but I don't want to be a doormat, and I don't want other people to be a doormat. And sometimes when you see something like this, even though it's scriptural and it's in the Bible, living for another, people take that to mean that they are to be a doormat. And that, for example, that... There would never be a situation in life in which they might need counseling. And like, you know, there are times. Oh, I'm an advocate of counseling. I talk about that in the book. Mm -hmm. I talk about, I'm an advocate of counseling, but I'm not an advocate of chronic counselees. Amen. I, I, I do believe that there's a time where, where the, but in the final, if you look at AA, if you look at NA, if you look at any of the organizations, the Christian organizations that deal with alcoholism and all those sure. other things. What's the final stages of healing? When you begin to pour your healing into other people. Amen. When you begin to actually take what you've learned and pour it out, right. you learn more. How many, how many times have you ever heard people say the teacher learns more than the student? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's time for us to take a break. We want you to stay with us. We're taking a look today into this book called Living for Another. And one of the things that we're going to delve into in the next segment is forgiving one another. And we all know that that is a great big one. So stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about how do we forgive one another. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. If you're just joining us on Bridges, we're taking a look at a book called Living for Another. And Brent, we were talking about um, how there are so many mentions in the Bible of the word another. Mm -hmm. You know, living for another, bearing one another's burdens, forgiving one another, and that's a biggie. Yeah, that's so, a big, and I took a little time on that yeah. one because that's that's probably I I honestly believe that many of our, our even our mental institutions and our pharmaceutical companies would go broke if we could handle just the word forgiveness, you know, either forgiving ourselves or forgiving others. I agree, and probably even jails and prisons, absolutely, and just all kinds of places, and just really even all kinds of miserable people would no longer be miserable. Absolutely, if we understood the power and how to forgive one another. Mm -hmm. So help us out. I now, know it's in the book. I know I'm not an expert to start with. I'm not an expert on anything because I don't like experts. They're boring. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no such thing as an expert in Christianity because it's a journey. Isn't that the you truth? know? So 
but but I, I've, I've talked to lots of people about this. I've counseled with lots of people about this. I've dealt with this in my own mm-hmm. life. So as I began to study forgive one another, that simple scripture that we're to forgive one another, what does that mean? Well, you, you've always heard the statement, you're making a mountain out of a molehill, mm-hmm. right? Well, I picked that apart because there are mountains and there are molehills. Mm-hmm. And there are methods for the molehills and methods for the mountains. And so that's what we walk through. What is a, what is a molehill that you have? Um, I used to, I, I, I live in Tennessee. We have moles. We do. To destroy your yard. <laughs> mm-hmm. If it goes unchecked, it will ruin the root system of your landscape. Yeah. Same thing with unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. Unforgiveness is like a mole that is underground and will ruin the landscape of your life. Yeah. It really will. But how do you, how do you get rid of the moles? Mm-hmm. Well, you stomp the moles. They're easy. The little stuff, the little stuff is easy. And I always talk, I always, in the book, I talk about place a, place a dollar sign, a value on that relationship. If you place a dollar sign on the relationship that you're with, if that's a $50 relationship, then winning the argument is chump change. It's yeah. pocket change. Forgiveness is a gift. You, you always heard this. Forgiveness is a gift you give someone else, but you give yourself. Yeah, it is. You give yourself because did you know your body goes through that which you don't forgive? Every time you run through it in your head, they offend you all over again, don't they? Absolutely. How many times have you run it? You're in the car. Your body physically goes through that thing that you, that, that offense every mm-hmm. time. They hurt you once. Why are you letting them hurt you again and again? Yeah. It, because it, it is a chronic thing. Give yourself the gift of forgiveness. Amen. That's the small stuff, the easy stuff. That's the stuff of saying, she offended me. Well, as a Christian, to start with, um, I shouldn't have many rights if I'm to consider others better than myself. No. Have you suffered unto death like Christ? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to be crucified, spit at, beaten. Right. So I, I can look at the offense they've done, and I have to, we always say, we, I forgive you, but we put it in our pockets, mm-hmm. don't we? I, I use the term in there, you have to white out. You have to use the whiteout method. Whiteout was this brilliant, wonderful. Those of you who never type, I don't know which camera, but if you don't no, type it, we used to have this wonderful thing called typing. And it was great. It was typewriters. But you had to use this thing Absolute called whiteout, whiteout if you messed up. But here's the thing with whiteout. If you whited it out, you could still flip it over and see what you typed. <laughs> so before you turn it into your teacher and or boss, you had to whiteout both sides of the page. You did. Same thing with your forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You got to white out both sides of the page. You've got to say, I forgive you and give them forgiveness, but they've, give them grace. Grace means I forgive you. I'm going to act towards you as if the events never happened, but I want you to move in to my life again, and I'm going to give you everything that you would have had to start with. Mm-hmm. That's forgiveness on a small level. What about those mountains, the mountains that can't be overcome? That takes the miracle of forgiveness that only Christ can do. You've heard the stories of people, someone murders their son, they go into yep. prison, and they forgive that person. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? That's the miracle. I talk about at my father's death was the most, just the most painful moment of my life. I asked God. I had seen miracles in Haiti. I'd been in Haiti for years. I'd seen God do some amazing things. I knew God could heal my dad. I stood over his body, and I said, Father, I know you can heal him. And my God said, no. But then I got this. The Lord, it was as if he said, Brent, here, here's a miracle of a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. You've had that in your life. I don't know where the peace came from. I smiled out of nowhere, and a peace just permeated my life. Do you know you can ask for a forgiveness that passes all understanding? Absolutely. But that can only come from the Lord. It can. And, you know, it comes, Brent, I found in different ways. Sometimes it's instant. And the smile comes to the face, and there's that feeling of peace. And sometimes it's we, we ask a few times, and by an act of our will, we line ourselves up with that. And then there was one situation, it seemed like it was out of the blue, that that miracle of forgiveness swept over me, and that that pain and that anguish. It's not that I don't remember that it ever happened. It just didn't hurt it's not me holy the way amnesia. that it did. Exactly. It's never only amnesia. Yes. And, and it was like, you know... It seemed like it came out of the blue, but it was the result of prayer and obedience and trusting Absolutely. God. That's the miracle of forgiveness. Yeah. That I, 
you can't teach that. I'm sorry. It, there's not no. 16 points that all start with the same letter no. to teach that kind of forgiveness. I've talked to children of child abuse. I've talked yes. to people who, who, who their, their child was murdered. Mm -hmm. that, that miracle is something only God yeah. can do. I, I, I but you can ask for it. I've d talked to so many wonderful people on this program, and one, one story that just stood out with me, her name is Lorraine Huberry, mm -hmm. and her daughter was murdered, and, and the other daughter was molested and, and beaten and, and lived. Lorraine was able to, to lead the guy who killed her daughter to Christ before he was executed. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. Yeah, absolutely. I, who could do that? I'm sorry, there's no method for yeah, that. Yeah, right. So I talk about the methods. The methods for the molehills, but the method for the mountain is a miracle. Miracle. But you can ask for that. Our God Amen. is doing that. He yes. does that. He's done it for me. He does it all the time. Absolutely. He does it all the time. So the name of the book is Living for Another, and I'm talking today with the author Brent Gambrell, and we're talking about how more of others and how less of us really is that key to fulfillment. And you said it earlier, we are all looking for fulfillment, mm -hmm. whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. We're looking for ways to be fulfilled. And I think in our own selves, I know for me, the way that I, I think would work best is for me to get more of what I think I want. Mm -hmm. Except that that changes every day. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I never really get there. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the word that I, that, that I think I hate in America more than anything is upgrade. I am marketed to to upgrade my life, my phone, my my car, my this, my that, my that. And they always say it's free, but it's not. No, it is but not. That, the upgrades aren't free. And that upgrade is more and more. It fills the puddle more and more and more. Mm. But if you don't pour out, a puddle stagnates. Yeah. We drive in our walk with Christ. We drive in our lives because we're not pouring out. Absolutely. Two seas in the Middle East: Sea of Galilee, Dead Sea. Sea of Galilee is fed by the Jordan River. Then it flows out the other side, flows to the Dead Sea. Sea of Galilee is the most fertile plain on the planet. Mm. In and around that thing, tons of life. Down here, Dead Sea, nothing. Thus the name Dead Sea. Oh, how clever. Right. <laughs> right. They're both fed by the Jordan River. Why is this one alive and this one dead? Pours out, pours in this one, pours out, pours down to this one, goes nowhere, stagnates. That's our lives. Yeah. You get stuff dumped into you every single week at church. We stagnate because we're not pouring out our lives. Yeah, and I've heard so many people say, how can I go to church week after week? How can I read the Bible and still be so miserable or still be so stuck? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, if you just ate and ate and ate all the time and there was no physical activity, mm -hmm. then we you know get, the you've got to exercise your faith. Yeah. And, and, and living water is moving water. Mm -hmm. Living water is to flow from us. You also see, I see, people grow when they see Christ moving through them, in and around them. Amen. That only happens when you're moving. Yeah, and I think, you know, Brent, sometimes people, we make the mistake that we think that, you know, if we're not behind a pulpit or, say, writing a book or doing mm -hmm. something that we consider ministry, like a ministry-type job, then we're not to be pouring out. But what we're talking about living for another mm -hmm. is something that we can all do. You know, in the Absolutely. offices where we work, in the stores in which we shop, and does this book help us to know how to do that? I've been taking people to Haiti for 15 years. Mm. And people always say, Brent, some people, people go like, I'm so fulfilled here. And then yeah. I go back home. Yeah. Do you know why we are addicted to short-term missions in America? Mm -hmm. It's because for one week, you're the person you've always wanted to be. Wow. You're loving, caring, kind, all those wonderful things. Flexible. you got your eyes open. Guess what? You can actually take that home. Mm -hmm. Be loving, caring, kind, forgiving, flexible. Keep your eyes open to the ministry needs around you. What if it happens to be your spouse? or your, your parents, we would serve someone across the sea much quicker than we would serve our Right, home. like somebody that we've never met, right? Isn't that wild? That we're not related to. Right. We, we are able to serve them. But you're fulfilled that week. Them on, yes, and, but somebody that we're, you know, and it has, I think, somewhat to do with the expectations. Like if we're related to somebody that's our child, that's our spouse, we expect certain mm. things instead of being willing to serve. Exactly. When we wrote this book, when I wrote the thing, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something that you could meditate on yourself. Mm -hmm. It's also written for small groups. At the end of every chapter, we put something in. Because I love, I love information, but application is Absolutely. what I need in my life. Yeah. 
There's a so what section and a now what section at the end of every chapter. I so love what do I that. do with it? Now what do I do with it? So how do I apply it and then how do I pour it out? Tell me a little bit, Brent, if you can, because we've got just a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left about the small groups, because I think small groups are critical to the way that people grow in Christ, mm -hmm. that we interact into church life and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Well, the best thing in the world is to, is to, to, to read this with another because it's about another. Yeah. <laughs> and you get another perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I say it's just another book. But unless you pour into somebody, this book was written, I actually, as I was writing some of it, was taking a small group through it myself. Mm -hmm. And I watched young married couples go, okay, I've got to think about my spouse in this way more. I've got to think, I've got to forgive this person more or it's, or it's going to affect my life. I've seen single people, I have saw single people going through it, going, I can't believe how selfish I was. Yeah. So it was written for the small group so that you can have these discussions, very thought-provoking discussions, but it can be read alone. But... Again, why would you read a book about another when you can read it with another? Yeah, you know, yeah, you've got your time alone to read it, but that opportunity yeah. to share, absolutely, to, to see somebody else grow and to have them mm -hmm. help you in the discussions, because there's some things that we just won't get unless we're in communication right. with and, another. And, and <laughs> all these books can be purchased in bulk from our office and from Amazon and from Cokesbury and all those places. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank for you coming so much, and for joining me today. Once again, the book is Living for Another. It's written by Brent Gambrell, something that you can read on your own or do in a small group. All of us are looking for fulfillment. And what this book talks about is how we can most do that when we pour our lives into someone else. We're out of time. We got to go. But we say goodbye and God bless you. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. <laughs> he's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction, there's not a generational curse, there's not any root of sin, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615 754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org.